Hello everyone. Today we will see how to follow a profile on a helical trajectory in the shape of a spiral and that without extension. So I'm taking this opportunity to present to you a tutorial that I posted online the same day as this one to model a spiral in less than 40 seconds. This will allow you to model twisting stairs, springs, parking ramps, and so on. Here are some possible applications with the technique that we will see today. The first application is the one that we will see together in this tutorial. It is to create a handrail from this profile. Second possible application from this simple profile, we will model a parking ramp, for example. We will complete the bottom later. Another application, we can make a staircase like this quite quickly, but this time not from a profile, but from a section like this. Last application that I'm presenting to you today, it is the same principle as the staircase, but this time you understand it is for an access ramp to a parking lot with a guardrail on both sides. So there we can see the difference that here we can clearly see the breaks made by SketchUp and there on the other hand, it is well-rounded. So simply why? Because on this section, I modeled with circular arcs here, the edges, whereas on this section, there are straight lines. I imagine that you have already tried to make a profile follow a helical trajectory. And of course, it does not work, like these two examples here. Remember to download the working file to manipulate at the same time as me. The link is in the description of this tutorial, and thus acquire the technique that I propose to you just after. If we follow this profile on this trajectory, it will give us this result. First, the profile is going to be completely distorted, and then you noticed that the profile is going to be inverted. That is to say that the trajectory will be completely twisted. So we're gonna tell you that you have to put the profile normal, that is to say perpendicular to the first stop of the trajectory. That's what I did here. I have also provided you with a little tutorial which explains how to proceed. So this time, the profile is indeed respected, but on the other hand, the trajectory has also completely twisted and the profile ends up upside down. I select all of these trajectories, which I delete, and we will begin to model our handrail. I would like to point out that this technique was developed in collaboration with a very active member of my Discord server named Philippe. You can see that he is very involved. He really has some great achievements to his credit. So this time, here we go, let's start. I have divided our technique into two very distinct parts. The first will be to model the handrail or any other shape as I presented to you earlier at the start of the tutorial. And the second part will be to resize the handrail once the technique is completed. So to begin with, I drew a circle of 24 segments for the examples that I presented to you earlier. I had put 48. So it's up to you to see if you want to increase the number or not of segments. Please note that this will make the file larger and may slow down your SketchUp a little. To make the work easier, we will first rotate the circle so that the midpoint here is on the red axis. Then I'm going to draw two lines that go from the center to these two ends. It is essential to transform the profile into a component. Then I move from the midpoint here of the edge here directly to the point here. So I enter the component and I'm going to push it straight to the other end here. I will have to orient the two faces, so this one and the one on the other side with the same angle as the lines that I traced. I select the left side letter Q here. I force with the direction arrow on the blue plane and I orient along my edge here. I do the same on the other side. I select the right side. We turn on the blue plane from this point here to my edge there. Now I remove the face from this side. Very important. I also delete the other side, because if we forget to delete the faces, they will be copied everywhere and we will have to delete them one after the other. So now that my section is finished, I will have to determine the angle I want to obtain my spiral. 
Let's say that my spiral makes a complete turn and that I need it to measure 2.50 meters. What I'm going to do is that given that I have 24 segments on my circle, I'm going to have to divide the height, so the 2.50 meters by 24, to know the height with which I have to go up the whole right side. I take the calculator and do 2,524, and I get 104.17. We round up. I select my entire right side, Move Tool. From this point, we are stuck on the ground. So we press Alt, we block on the blue axis. I go up and I type 10417, and I validate. And here is the angle that will give me the height of 2.50 view meters. My section is finished. So I leave my component, and this time I will be able to duplicate it. I select, I make my copy. From this point here, I'm going to multiply by 5 to make a quarter turn. And there I deselect. I take the move. I'm going to move from the middle point here to this one directly. And I do like this for the other sections. That's it. I've finished moving my sections. I select them like this. I make a copy again. Directly here. And I type X3 to make my complete turn. I take advantage of the fact that they are all selected. I take the Move tool. And like before, I move from this midpoint to this one. I move the next segments. and last section. The spiral-shaped handrail is finished. All that remains is to break it up and soften it to smooth it out if sometimes we're finished. We will now see how to resize the profile of the spiral if sometimes it does not suit us because we find that it is too small, too large, not wide enough, etc. So this of course must be done before breaking out all the components. To do this, I open my component and select the assembly. I take the scale tool to enlarge, for example, the width if the shape is too narrow. From the center, I can go up a little bit. We'll say that I modified as I wanted. I deselect everything, and you see I have to orient my two sides again. So I select the left side as before, and I always turn on the blue plane from the intersection here, this edge there and I turn on this one. This one is going to be in my way, so I'm going to hide it. I'm selecting the right side here, and I'm rotating from the aligned midpoint to this edge. I reveal what I hid earlier. That's it. All I have to do now is move my components on top of each other. With the Move This Point tool, I'm going to make six like earlier, and I'll come back. That's it. All I have to do is remove the excess components. I select like earlier. I start the procedure again. I copy from the center to this point, X3, and so on. I pause and come back. My spiral is over. I will now be able to break it. Then we're going to smooth it, so we uncheck, we recheck, and that's it. All I have to do is finish here by drawing a small line from one end to another to fill in the face. I do the same at the top. So be careful, we cannot resize the spiral in height with the scale tool like that, otherwise it will overwrite the profile. This tutorial is finished. I hope you found it interesting, so don't hesitate to join us on Discord so that we can discuss this tutorial together or if you have any other questions to ask us. See you soon. Thank you.